Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Story Seeds Podcast. I'm your host, Betsy Bird, and you have arrived at the podcast where imagination rules. Our show places kids and their awesome story ideas at the collaboration table with their favorite authors. Together, they talk about their inspirations and brainstorm ideas. Then the author goes home where they fill in more characters and details and create a never-before-heard-of story that you will get to hear right on the show. There they are Underneath the soil in the sun Where anything can grow It's another day the seed has just begun to turn into a show when you find the path you didn't know and the story seeds start to grow on story seeds you're in control of your destiny adventures you design where your dreams can grow little more each time on story seeds it only goes to show if you want to be what you know and to story seed and watch it grow now let's meet the creative rock star behind today's episode my name is Yana Cabrera. I am 12 years old and I live in New York City. My family is multi-ethnic. My mom's family is from Bangladesh and my dad's family is from Dominican Republic. My story seed is about a girl who doesn't fit in with her family full of celebrities until one day she receives a magic mirror from a fairy. A magic mirror. Hmm. You know, since uh, ancient times, magic mirrors have been a storyteller's best friend. Remember the evil queen's mirror in Snow White? And you may well know the mirror, or looking glass, that Alice climbed into. Or the mirror of Erised in Harry Potter. In stories, mirrors can make wishes come true. They can tell you truths you don't want to know. And they can be magical doorways to other worlds. When I first heard Liana's story seed about a magic mirror, I thought to myself, I know the perfect author! Someone who is already a pro at creating a story about how magic can change the life of a regular girl. My name is Rajani Laraka, and I'm the author of Midsummer's Mayhem. Midsummer's Mayhem is a wackadoodle book that stirs together Shakespeare, magic, and baking. It's about a girl who finds a book of magic recipes that causes havoc in her family. Once we got Rajni on board, our next step was to find a magic mirror in New York City. Or something that felt magical. So we popped open the yellow pages and pulled out our dusty Rolodex. And I am kidding you. We don't actually live in the year 1985. No, what we actually did was some Google searches. And, well, that led us to a little New York City antique store that has quite a collection of mirrors. Welcome to Pippin Vintage Home. That's the owner, Stephen. We are 100% vintage. We don't buy and sell anything brand new. We have almost no carbon footprint. Everything in the store is at least 25 years old. Pippin Vintage Home is a very unusual little shop with an unusual address, 112 and a half West 17th Street. The shop is located inside an old-fashioned carriage house. Imagine a little cottage painted light green, It was built in the late 19th century, back in the days when a horse-drawn carriage was the only means of getting around New York City's cobblestone streets. To enter Pippin, you have to walk down a narrow alley that has been converted into a hallway of mirrors, mirrors of all shapes and sizes line both sides. Now, some mirrors are fancy, like the ones in King Louis XIV's Hall of Mirrors and the Palace of Versailles, and some are plain as can be. You can feel like you're time traveling as you walk down the hallway with mirrors from faraway places. This would be the perfect place for Liana and her author, Rajni Laraka, to meet and grow Liana's story seed. Both Liana and Rajni made their way to Pippin Vintage on a sunny Sunday morning. 
surrounded by mirrors on every side, they had one goal, to find the mirror that could transform Liana's seed into a story. Do you think that this place might have a role in the story? Yeah. Let's see if we can go a little bit further down and uh, find some ones that might be our favorites. I like the circular ones. Yeah, this one's really neat. Does this remind you of something? Well, there's like lots of these kind of like, kind of reminds me of like Christmas sometimes. Yeah, like a wreath almost at the yeah. bottom. And this feels like a porthole, like mm -hmm. in a ship yeah. or on a submarine. Yeah. And it comes out towards us, so it's convex. Yeah. And it makes us look a little bit funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like R2-D2 <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like ancient looking. Ancient is what we're going for, okay. So probably not this wooden one. Yeah. This is very modern. plain yeah. and modern, exactly. I like this mirror. I like the designs on it. It's really pretty. And I really like the flower. Okay, cool. And would you want it to be an iron mirror in the story or would you want it to be a different color? A wooden one, like an ancient wood. Ancient wooden one, okay, that's really cool. Okay, and dark wood? Light wood? Darker. Dark wood, okay. Yeah. Very cool. After looking at the mirrors, Liana and Rajni walked through Pippin and checked out clothes, furniture, and old trinkets from all over the world. And then they settled down in the back of the store to chat about Liana's story seat. So can you tell me about the main character in the story? Well, I thought like that she wasn't really as talented as her family. Mm -hmm. Is she the oldest? Is she the youngest? Does she have brothers and sisters? Yeah. These are the people that are famous, or is everyone in the family famous? Everybody in the family is famous except her. Okay. So, like, she has a mom and a dad, mm -hmm. and they're both famous. I thought that she would be, like, the middle child. The middle child. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, so the younger ones are also famous? Uh-oh. She's in trouble here if, like, they're all famous and she's not. Yeah. Okay. Can you tell me how many brothers and how many sisters she has? She has two younger ones that are twins, and the rest are older than her. Okay. But they're not twins. What are they famous for? I thought the twins could be like singers or like acrobats. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. And the everyone else, are they all famous at the same things? Like, is it like an acrobatic singing family? No, I was like different. Different things? Yeah, okay. Different. Like dancing and mm. any of them sports people? Maybe one of the brothers. Okay. And then what about, like, is anyone a YouTuber? Like, just famous for just, like, telling everybody on the internet what they think? I didn't think about that, but that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. All right. And what about the parents? Are they famous for something in particular, or are you not sure? Maybe one is a model. Ah, okay. Nice. And she, she's not good at any of those things? No. You think the dad is a soccer player? Yeah. Okay, like a famous uh -huh. soccer player? Yeah. How does she feel about her siblings? I know that she feels like she's not as like talented as, she, as they are, but does she like them? Does she yeah. get along with them? Yeah, but she's like sometimes jealous. Mm. Yeah. I think that's like a really good thing to think about because um, when you're writing a story, I think a lot of times people want to make the main character just like a really good person all the time that like doesn't do anything wrong or doesn't feel anything kind of sad or bad, but the really interesting parts of stories happen when people make mistakes or they, you know, they feel something and because of that they do something that they later regret. I like that. What does she look like? Do you have any ideas? Well, I want her to come from Bangladesh. Okay. So dark hair and brown eyes, brown skin. Awesome. Is she tall or short, or is she just kind of average? Average. Is the mom from Bangladesh? Yeah. And what about her dad? From Japan. And does she like anything? Like, does she have certain things that she really loves, but like the rest of her family is not really into? Chennai chur. It's like this thing that's really 
really good in Bangladesh. I don't really know how to describe it. It's like spicy, but I don't really know how it's made up. If you've never tried chana chur, it's like a yummy, salty, spicy Chex Mix. It's made of fried chickpea noodle, peanuts, and other spices and flavors. You can find it or a version of it at your nearest South Asian grocery store. In fact, mm, oh, yeah. I am enjoying some right now. Mm, just like uh, Liana did mm, when she went to summer camp last year. In my camp, I was talking about chana chur, and they were like, what is that? And my friend was like, chana chewy? <laughs> <laughs> Can I try the chana chewy? <laughs> did you have some with you at well, camp? My parents did send me some, mm-hmm. and they tried it. Some of them didn't like it, but some of them did. One of the things you talked about with this story seed is that this character doesn't feel like she fits in with the rest of her family. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to share a food memory with you. (laughs) When I was in school, so I'm Indian. My family is from India. Mm -hmm. And most of the food that we ate at home was Indian. And most of it was vegetarian. So (laughs) one day in school, I think I was a little younger than you, um, people were talking about their favorite foods. And I was like, okra. (laughs) My classmates were like, what are you even talking about? What is okra? And like, why would you think it was good? And I was like, I don't don't know. Like, this is, my mom makes it and it's really tasty and I like it. So I just felt like, oh my, everyone was like hot dogs, you know, pizza. And I was like, I can't believe I said okra, but it was the truth. (laughs) All right. So let's talk a little bit about the fairy that our main character meets. Do you think she looks like a regular person? Do you think she looks like a real, like a fairy? Or like, like do you have ideas? small. You know how like they're like small? A little fairy. A little yeah, fairy. Yeah. Okay. It's like as long as like one of your fingers. <laughs> I thought she should look like this fairy. This is the fairy I drew and she has light brown hair, brown eyes, and like light blue wings. And a leaf shirt with a turtleneck and a rose petal skirt and leaf shoes. I love it. She looks yeah. really sweet. So why does the fairy interact with our main character? Like what makes the fairy want to do anything for her? I kind of imagined it as she gave the mirror by accident. Mmm. kind of imagined the fairy as like clumsy, forgetful. A clumsy, forgetful fairy. Okay. Do you have any idea what kind of trouble it causes her, or do you want to leave that up to me? Mm, You can decide. When we come back, we'll hear how Rajni grew Liana's story seed. Hi, this is Amrita, Story Seeds Child Handler. If you're enjoying the Story Seeds podcast and think our show is fun for kids and families, you can support us by making a donation today. Log on to our website at www.storyseedspodcast.com and click the donate button at the top of the page. Your donation, large or small, will help us create more episodes of the show and opportunities for more kids from around the world to participate in Story Seeds. Thank you. Welcome back to the Story Seeds podcast. After Liana and Rajni finished up their conversation, they left the store, walked back out through the enchanting hallway of mirrors, and found themselves back in modern-day New York City. Rajni gathered everything she needed and traveled back to her home in Concord, Massachusetts, where, fun fact, the characters from Little Women once lived. Well, she left this message for Liana before she began writing. Hi, Liana. This is Rajni Laraka. Our field trip to Pippin Home and Vintage has given me lots of food for thought. Since our meeting, I've been thinking a lot about both the main character and her relationship with her family, and what she really wants. And the fairy that you mentioned. I love the idea of a clumsy and forgetful fairy. I also 
loved the store and was really inspired by that Hall of Mirrors in particular. I love the idea of a mirror and what, what it represents in terms of showing the world as it is. And I can't wait to dig into the story. What kind of funny magic the mirror has and what the fairy has to do with everything. Well, I'm off to go write this story. Have a great day, Liana. Bye. And write that story she did. So, my dear listeners, grab your popcorn, grab your chunachur, because now, here, for the first time ever, making its debut on podcasts everywhere, I am happy to reveal the story Rajni Laraka grew from Liana Cabrera's story seed, Aina and the Mirror. Aina and the Mirror by Rajni Laraka Story Seed by Liana Cabrera The fairies of South Asia are different from their European cousins, said the book. They tend to favor green wings rather than the blue of their western counterparts. Aina grabbed another handful of chanachur, her favorite Bangladeshi snack, made of crunchy fried chickpea flour noodles and peanuts, spicy and perfect. She chewed and turned the page, but the door buzzer interrupted her. As usual, Aina was the only one who heard it, which was funny, because it was never for her. Ma, she said, someone's at the door. Can you get it, please, darling? Aina's mom held a phone in one hand and a tablet in the other that was trained on the twins, who were recording their latest YouTube video. Let's try to be efficient, my lovelies. I still have so much to do before the party tonight. Mom shook her head, and her dark hair flowed like a stream over the shoulders of her peacock blue dressing gown. Last take, Ma, we promise. The twins, who were nine, grinned and started again. Welcome to Best Tech for Kids, said Aina's sister. We're Ami and Arsh, your experts on toys that are techie and fabulous. Today, we're testing out a new app that can tell you how delicious a food is before you eat it. Wouldn't actually tasting a food be better and way more fun? Aina had created her own spice formula for her chanachur, and she was pretty sure no app would ever be able to figure it out. But her little brother and sister were about to celebrate their seventh anniversary as YouTube stars, so clearly lots of people wanted to know what they had to say about the latest gadgets. Aina put her book down and hurried to the door before the buzzer went off again. This kind of chaos was normal in Aina's family. Mom was a famous Bangladeshi supermodel, and Dad was a former Japanese soccer star. Aina's 15-year-old sister, Ada, was an entrepreneur who helped other kids start businesses. Her 13-year-old brother, Akira, was a famous digital artist. The twins were YouTube stars. Aina, age 12, was the only one in the family who, as the twins put it, maintained a low profile. It was so low, in fact, that it couldn't be seen. And that was the way Aina liked it. Except for the chanachur. She'd love for all kinds of people to taste it and recognize her for her creations not just who she was related to. Aina pushed the button on the intercom. It was a package delivery, so she had it sent up. A few minutes later, she opened the door and brought a plain brown package into the apartment. The box was addressed to her, which was strange. She hadn't ordered anything, and she wasn't famous like the rest of her family, who were always getting free gifts. She opened it, unwrapped something covered in bright pink tissue paper, and gasped in delight. It was an oval mirror with an ornate frame of dark wood intricately carved with animals, leaves, and flowers. At the top was a cluster of four flowers which seemed vaguely familiar, although she didn't know why. They were arranged like the directions of a compass, and the one on the top was painted a dark red. There was no note, no return address, no sign of who had sent it to her. Look what came for me. Is it from you? Aina brought the mirror to her mom. Ma took the mirror and flared her perfect nostrils. 
I didn't order this, darling. Why would I order you an old mirror that can't do anything? I have my eye on a chrome mirror with a super zoom feature. This one looks ancient. She handed the mirror back. Oh, well, I must go get ready now. Can I keep it? Aina loved old things that had lived their own lives before they came to her. Of course. The package was for you, right? Mom said. Miss Huddle will be here in an hour to stay with you and the twins. Ada and Akira are spending the night with friends. Aina took the mirror and her bowl of chanachur into her room. She put the mirror on her desk and gazed into it. It wasn't very small or very large. It was about the size of a piece of notebook paper. She grabbed another handful of chanachur. I wish I could take this to a second glance, she said. A second glance was the antique store down the street, a place full of history and, Aina thought, a little magic. But she'd have to ask Mom, who was already in a hurry. A bit of chanachur fell onto the mirror. And then something happened, which made Aina gasp for a second time that afternoon. The chanachur sank into the mirror and disappeared. That was impossible! Aina searched the floor nearby, but it was completely clean. I imagined it, that's all. There's no way the mirror absorbed the chanachur like that. Oh, no! Ma yelped from the living room. Aina rushed out of her room to find her mother all stressed out. What's wrong? she asked. Zuzu's walker just called. She's sick, lamented Ma, and no one else is available on such short notice. Zuzu was their border collie. And if she didn't get her evening walk, she'd chew all the shoes in the apartment. And Miss Huddle had a strict no-dog-walking policy. The twins would be too busy editing their latest video to walk Zuzu. But Aina had an idea. I could take Zuzu for a walk now, she said. Oh, darling, would you? Absolutely. And we'll stop at a second glance on the way home? Darling, you're a lifesaver, cried Ma. Just be back before Daddy and I have to leave. Aina breathed the sweet scent of freedom as she stepped out the front door and onto the busy New York City sidewalk with the mirror carefully stowed in her trusty canvas tote bag. Come on, girl, she told Zuzu. Let's see if we can do some investigating. She walked Zuzu for several blocks, then made her way to a second glance. It was one of her favorite places. She opened a dark blue door and strolled down a sheltered corridor lined with dozens of mirrors, metal and wooden, simple and fancy, that reflected her face from all kinds of interesting angles, until she reached a small courtyard, complete with an ivy-covered trellis strung with fairy lights. Every time Aina came here, it felt like she was stepping out of modern-day Manhattan and into a secret hideaway. The oversized oak door with the large oval glass panel beckoned her. Zuzu lapped delicately at the water bowl outside the door. Well-behaved dogs were always welcome here. A bell tinkled as Aina opened the door, and she was immediately greeted by the owner, Mr. Wander, who had a head full of thick white hair and bright blue eyes with smile crinkles at the corners. Aina, he said cheerfully, how can I help you today? Aina never bought anything except on the rare occasions when she came in with her parents, but Mr. Wander always let her look at anything she liked. Would you please take a look at something? She pulled the mirror out of her bag and laid it carefully on the counter. Mr. Wander pushed his glasses further up on his nose as he examined it. This is excellent craftsmanship. I wonder... Just one moment. He went into another room and returned with something small that he laid on the counter. What do you think of that? It was a hair ornament, made from dark wood and beautifully carved. Like the mirror, it had four flowers, arranged like the points of a compass, and this time the left one was colored a dark blue. The design is almost exactly the same, cried Aina. Where is it from? This is from the 19th century, South Asia, the eastern part of India, possibly Bengal. I suspect these two were crafted by the same person. Aina had to have it. Her mom was from that part of the world. How much is it? $300. It's one of a kind. 
Aina had all of $7.20 on her, and even with all her birthday money, she couldn't afford it. Mom and Dad might have bought it for her, but she liked to earn things for herself. Thank you, Mr. Wander, she said. I'd better get Zuzu home. Zuzu wagged her tail as Aina stepped onto the sidewalk. I wonder who made this mirror and that beautiful comb. I wish I could find out. You already got one wish for free, said a muffled voice. Aina stopped and looked around. There was no one anywhere near her on the sidewalk. In your bag, said the voice with a giggle. (laughs) Aina's mouth went dry as she reached into her bag and pulled out the mirror. Ah, thanks. Much better view from here. The voice was high-pitched and musical. You can talk! Of course I can talk. In any case, if you want that hair thingy, you're going to have to do something for me first. Oh, and more chanachur, please. That's the best I've ever tasted. What? What are you? Aina asked. But the mirror became silent. Zuzu whined, and people on the street brushed past them. Aina had to get home before she had any more hallucinations. But as she pushed the mirror back into her bag, Aina caught a glimpse of something fluttering at its edge. Something green and transparent. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Hi, Liana. I just wanted to let you know that I had so much fun writing this story and meeting you and learning about your story seed was just a great inspiration for me. I hope you see all the little touches, um, all the details that we talked about when we met in the story and I hope you enjoy it. And in terms of what comes next, I would love for you to think about what the mirror and the hair comb that Aina finds have in common and why you think they might be so familiar to her and think about what might happen in the next chapter. Hi, this is Liana and I really like the story and my favorite part was when the fairy says that she likes the charter tour and asks for more. I found that really funny and I also thought it was kind of ironic because The family kind of sounded like my family, and my mom told me that Ina meant mirror, and in Bangladesh, my grandfather gave me a Bangla name, which is Arshi, which also means mirror, and how I continue this story, I would probably do that as Ina is walking home, she bumps into a boy, and he's wearing an apron, from a donut shop, let's call it Plumpkin Munchkins, and she notices the mirror in Ina's bag, and she exclaims that it's his family's mirror, and yeah, that's how I would continue it. Whoa, all this food talk really has me hungry for more snacks. Oh, but never mind that. Now, it's your turn, dear listeners. How would you continue the story? Give me a call on the Story Seeds hotline at 646-389-5153 and leave me a message telling me what you think will happen next. Also, visit us on our website at www.storyseedspodcast.com and see some special behind-the-scenes photos and other tidbits about Liana and Rajni, like, OMG, she's a doctor and an author. While you're there, you can sign up for the Story Seed Society, our listeners' kids' club. Next week, I'll be back with a bonus episode where you can hear my interview with Rajni Laraka. Story Seeds is a literary safari production. Thank you to Pippin Vintage for its support of this episode of the Story Seeds podcast. This episode was produced by Sandhya Nankani, Anjali Sakrani, and Kayla Fedison. Scoring, mixing, and sound design is by Anya Jeshik and Matt Boynton of Ultraviolet Audio. Our theme music is composed and performed by Andrew Van Weingarten. Field audio was recorded by James Boo. And I am your host, Betsy Bird. 
Until we meet again, keep growing that imagination. On Story Seeds, you're in control of your destiny. Adventures you design, where your dreams can grow. A little more each time, on Story Seeds.